New government orders. U.S. airlines and airports must tighten security and be on guard for terrorist attacks. Researchers find a genetic flaw that helps make people fat. This discovery could someday help make people thin. And the death and life of Jerry Garcia. What a long, strange trip it's been. This is the CBS Evening News with Dan Rather. Good evening. The U.S. government says there's reason to believe Americans could once again become the targets of a terror attack. So the FAA is telling airports and airlines operating in this country to tighten their security. CBS News correspondent Bob Orr has more about what's behind the order and the impact it's likely to have on travelers. It's the first time since the Persian Gulf War that federal officials have tightened security at the nation's airports to guard against possible terrorist attacks. This increase in security is based on information provided by federal law enforcement and intelligence agencies, which I cannot discuss in detail. CBS News has learned the alert is in part a response to anti-American rhetoric from the Middle East following the arrest in New York of Musa Abu Marzouk. Abu Marzouk is the alleged political director of the militant Islamic group Hamas, which today faxed this statement to the Reuters news service in Syria, warning the Clinton administration of, quote, negative effects and dangerous consequences. These groups will do that sort of thing. And to them, an airplane full of people is no different from a building full of people. They'll do it. And they'll do it in the United States, as the World Trade Center showed. They'll do it anywhere they choose. Federal officials have grown increasingly concerned about security, given the upcoming trial of additional suspects in the World Trade Center bombing, and this fall's scheduled visit by Pope John Paul II to New York and Baltimore. In January, plots uncovered in the Philippines targeting the Pope and U.S. airlines prompted the FAA to order pat-down searches of all passengers flying from Asia to the United States. Today's security directive doesn't go that far, but luggage and passengers will be screened more carefully, likely causing delays. The airline industry, while cooperating, questions whether the alert is necessary, absent any specific threat against aviation. Our concern is that this needlessly tra uh, scares the traveling public. We question whether airlines are being singled out. In fact, the warning is not limited to airlines. The Clinton administration has ordered all federal agencies to review security in what one official called this increasingly dangerous world. Bob Orr, CBS News, Washington. Indictments are about to be returned in the deadliest terror attack ever in this country, the bombing of the federal building in Oklahoma City, which killed 168 people. All of the suspects in that case are Americans. None have anything to do with Islam. As has been previously reported, an old U.S. Army buddy of the alleged bombers will help the government make its case against them. Correspondent Scott Pelley has more tonight about that. As early as tomorrow, a federal grand jury is expected to indict three men in the Oklahoma terror bombing. The indictments will allege the mass murder was motivated by a hatred of government and financed with the sale of stolen weapons. Prime suspects Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols will be charged in the bombing itself and will face the death penalty. The indictments will allege Nichols helped build the bomb and McVeigh delivered it. Also to be indicted, Michael Fortier, an army buddy of the suspects who will plead guilty to relatively minor charges in return for his testimony. Federal sources tell CBS News Fortier helped case the federal building and participated in the theft of guns used to finance the plot. The charges that he uh, has agreed to plead out to represent the uh, uh, nature and extent of uh, his uh, responsibility. Fortier will plead guilty to transportation of stolen arms, conspiracy to transport stolen arms, lying to federal agents, and failure to alert authorities to a felony, namely the bomb plot. Maximum penalty on all charges, 23 years, no parole. Sources say Fortier knew of the plot but did not take part in the attack. He and his wife testified before the grand jury yesterday. His attorney said today, they're motivated by guilt. There uh, have been very concerned about the victims. I think that has been foremost in their minds, and they're trying to do the right thing. Fortier may plead as early as tomorrow. He would be taken into custody immediately. CBS News has learned that McVeigh now knows his friend will testify against him but McVeigh still intends to plead not guilty early next week. Scott Pelley, CBS News, Oklahoma City. 
In Washington, a key target of the Republican Whitewater attack in Congress was called to testify today. Former White House counsel Bernard Nussbaum said he did nothing wrong and certainly attempted no cover-up following the suicide of presidential aide Vincent Foster. Chief Washington correspondent Bob Schieffer reports. A defiant Nussbaum said he was only protecting White House confidentiality when he restricted a police search of Vince Foster's White House office after he died. Nussbaum said no one was trying to hide Whitewater documents. His only regret was not finding Foster's suicide note sooner. That was a mistake. But I tell you, on the big calls, and I had to make a lot of big calls, I was right. That contrasted sharply with last week's testimony from a former Justice Department official who told of complaining angrily to Nussbaum about the treatment his investigators were getting from the White House. And I remember saying to him, uh, Bernie, are you hiding something? And he said, no, Phil, I promise you, we're not hiding something. Nussbaum didn't remember it that way at all. Do you recall him saying, are you hiding something? And you don't recall that something so central, so uh, uh, indicting, and you don't recall this at Senator, all. Senator, Mr. Hyman never said to me on the phone, in words of substance, and I do recall this, never said to me on the phone in words of substance, you are misusing us. You are misusing the Justice Department. He never said that. that Did he say, are you hiding something, Mr. Nussbaum? He could he have said that? Yes, he could, he could have said that, uh -huh. but I, I don't remember that. But Nussbaum did seem to have qualms about investigators rummaging through Foster's office. Why didn't you say, Mr. Hyman, come on down and we'll look over this together? Senator, do you trust the, just, did you trust the Justice Department? On stuff like that, I Would certainly. you let him in to your office, your counsel's office, to look at your personal... Absolutely, I have nothing to hide. Throughout, Nussbaum maintained no wrongdoing, but that exchange helped explain the mindset that led the Clinton team to close ranks so quickly after Foster died. Bob Schieffer, CBS News at the Capitol. Coming up next, new research advances the fight against fat from mice to humans. Also ahead, a radical approach to curing heroin addiction while the patient sleeps. Alan's asthma attack woke me. At 3 a.m., you don't try some unknown brand. You trust Primatine Mist. It starts to open clogged breathing passages in as fast as 15 seconds. We take asthma seriously with Primatine Mist. Fastest type asthma relief without a prescription. You know all that seafood you love at Red Lobster? Well, we've just lowered our prices with 15 dinners under $10. Like our shrimp sampler, just $7.99. With so much under $10, you're going to love Red Lobster even more. If you won't settle for Parmesan cheese that isn't 100% Parmesan... What was I thinking? What, what were you thinking? thinking? Make sure you get one that is. Olé! Kraft Parmesan. It's always 100% Parmesan. No fillers. Come back. Olé! Real Italian meals don't begin without Kraft 100% grated Parmesan cheese. Now you can eat. Major breaking news from the White House. CBS News White House correspondent Bill Plant reports that President Clinton will announce his intention tomorrow to allow the Federal Food and Drug Administration to regulate tobacco products as dangerous drugs. The move has major political, economic, and health implications. Following the President's move, it would then be up to the FDA to propose whether and how to actually regulate tobacco products. For the millions of people concerned about taking those extra pounds off and keeping them off, there is word tonight of a promising new line of research. According to the latest studies in the New England Journal of Medicine, for the first time, scientists have pinpointed a genetic flaw linked to obesity in humans. Health correspondent Dr. Bob Arnard has the story. Tonight reports come from around the world, from France, from Finland, from the United States. Three separate teams of researchers have identified the first defective human fat gene. People with this mutation tend to have a lower metabolic rate, and we believe that that, in turn, predisposes to weight gain and obesity. Here's how. A normal human fat cell has a switch on it called a beta-3 receptor, which, when turned on, breaks down fat and speeds up metabolism. 
But with the gene defect, that switch is broken, leading to obesity, which in turn leads to a sharply increased risk of diabetes. These findings really are the first time that they've been able to identify a gene that may predispose people to an earlier onset of non-insulin dependent diabetes. Take the Pima Indians in Arizona, studied for one of today's reports. They have amongst the highest prevalence of diabetes and obesity in the world. Adrian Kisto is 31 and was recently diagnosed with diabetes. My, my mother was diabetic, my grandmother and all. My family just, it ran, in our family, I was pretty much just waiting to be, to be diabetic. Finnish patients with the gene defect had increased abdominal obesity, the most dangerous form. The French patients, the largest overall weight gain. Researchers caution, however, that there are likely to be other gene defects that can lead to obesity. Obesity in humans is likely to be the result of many different genetic mutations all working together. The NIH isn't ready to recommend testing for the defective gene, but major drug companies are already scrambling to cash in on a new generation of drugs that burn fat and speed metabolism. Some of the drugs are already being tested in humans. We'll have a progress report on them tomorrow night. Dr. Bob Arnott, CBS News, New York. Doctors say Mickey Mantle's condition has worsened. He is in serious condition at a hospital in Texas. The greatest switch hitter of all time, the 63-year-old Mantle got a liver transplant two months ago, but now the cancer has spread to his lungs and beyond. At the O.J. Simpson trial today, no testimony but an important ruling about evidence. And as correspondent Bill Whitaker reports, the ruling went against O.J. Simpson. Judge Lanzito threw a monkey wrench in the defense conspiracy theory. His much-anticipated ruling means Simpson's attorneys can't question two journalists about the sources of news stories and can't have access to an internal police probe into alleged news leaks, a real setback for the defense. We're not going to whine. We're not going to complain. We just accept the ruling and go on. It all started with this, a TV report last September declaring a DNA match between Nicole Brown Simpson and blood on O.J. Simpson's side. The defense claimed the erroneous report, run even before the DNA tests were done, was proof of a police conspiracy to frame Simpson by planting, then leaking, damaging evidence. We're talking about passing out uh, test results out the back door. And what we're trying to get at in this case is who's responsible for that. Mere speculation ruled Judge Ito. Vindication crowed a chief investigator in the case. You know, I, I know what happened out there. I know the truth of the matter, and I know there's no police conspiracy, and uh, the entire thing is ridiculous. Today's ruling limits defense options. Well, the judge cut off some key avenues for the defense to make their conspiracy theory, which means that it's even more important that they attack Mark Furman and show that he planted evidence. Even though Judge Ito ruled these press leaks don't amount to a conspiracy, the defense believes there's still enough other evidence to eventually prove a conspiracy to the jury. Bill Whitaker, CBS News, Los Angeles. It was a white-knuckle hour without power that disrupted and delayed air traffic to, from, and over Northern California today. Airline pilots reported at least two close calls during the power blackout of a key air traffic control center in Fremont. More than 100 flights were grounded. Men, is gray hair sneaking up on you, right under your nose, making you look too old? Whoa, it is sneaking up on me. Up here, too. You need Just For Men Color Gel, made for the hard-to-color gray of mustaches and sideburns. Simply brush in this no-drip gel, and in five minutes, rinse, gray's gone. Your mustache and sideburns blend perfectly with your natural hair color. That gray won't sneak up on me again. Just For Men Color Gel, the sure thing for a natural look. The lights were out. John's sound asleep. And what am I doing? I'm hurting. I can't sleep, and I've got to work tomorrow. But I wasn't so sure about taking something. About how I'd feel in the morning. I went ahead and took Tylenol PM. It was the right choice. It stops my pain. It helps me sleep. So when morning comes, I'm ready to go. Right on time. All rested and feeling great. Come on, honey. Rest easy. It's Tylenol PM. Now also available in easy-to-swallow gel tabs. Everybody needs some money sometimes. 
When you need money fast. Hello, Dad? Count on Western Union. We send more money to more people around the world than anyone else. Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Pam, look. Phillips has gel caps. Gentle overnight relief in a little gel cap. This is just the thing for your constipation, honey. Even has a stool softener, huh, Brenda? Phillips has gel caps. A drug that targets the gene that makes people fat. It's the latest discovery in weight control. Penicillin, for instance, was great for uh, bacterial infections. And if this is as good as penicillin, which I think it might be, then this is a penicillin for obesity. So how does it work? And when might it be available? The story tomorrow on the CBS Evening News. The whip is in the other hand tonight in former Yugoslavia. Masses of Serbs have been driven from their homes in Croatia and forced to run a gauntlet through hostile territory into Serb-held northern Bosnia. Reports are mounting of attacks and atrocities against the refugees by the Croats and their Bosnian Muslim allies. Correspondent Cindy Kennard is in the war zone. This region is tonight awash with refugees. Thousands of homeless families with almost no possession. Roads so jam-packed they are now crawling towards safety. The world has seen this before. Usually, it's the result of Serb ethnic cleansing. This time, it's the Croat version. Inhumanity infecting both sides. It is a major humanitarian catastrophe. We are here confronted with more than 100,000 uh, people fleeing. The Serb refugees believe they were escaping. Instead, they have walked straight into a holocaust. The Croats taking bitter revenge on the roadsides, attacking some of the refugee convoys. Death and chaos heaped on misery. And that's not all. There are refugee suicides. They're probably terrified when they've come under fire, where uh, they probably think they have no future. Where the situation is very miserable and, and, and quite horrifying. But even when these people reach some kind of welcoming destination, they face months, even years, of more misery in refugee camps or homes. But for most, there are many more miles to go before they get there. Cine Kennard, CBS News, Zagreb. In Japan, thousands of people gathered at the site of the second and last atomic bombing of World War II. Up to 100,000 people died from the bombing of Nagasaki 50 years ago. Japanese political leaders today appealed for peace and a ban on nuclear testing. But the mayor of Nagasaki said Japan should also apologize for its atrocities in World War II. I had a young couple from Sweden come into my store that was interested in buying a neon sign. They had mailboxes, etc. We can pretty much pack and ship anything. The first question they asked me is, how do I get it home? It was a very fragile item. I made an instant decision to call mailboxes, etc. my buddy Norm. The item arrived there with no problem whatsoever. Norm's Norm. And he's, he's just a cool guy. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> Depend on mailboxes, etc. It's not what we do, it's how we do it. Well, we're here with Wanda and Babs, who feel that their zipper bag is fine and will not switch to Gladlock zipper bags. That's right. Ditto. Now, uh, Babbo, uh, let's say you hold some of your famous chicken gravy upside down over Wanda's head, sealed in either your bag or the Gladlock bag with the yellow and blue make green seal, so you know the bag is closed. Your bag doesn't have a green seal. Well, I say let's go for it with our bag. Why switch? Because it's my head. We'll switch to Gladlock. Good call, Wanda. When it really counts, get Gladlock. Chances are it will outlast your car, and your furnace, and your roof. There's no telling what your mowing faucet might outlast. Mowing. Buy it for looks. Buy it for life. It's no secret that men are different from women. So for our one-a-day men's formula, we've increased levels of antioxidants, as well as B vitamins. People are different. So is one-a-day. We've got the one for you. Today, Dave Ryan will understand the benefits of a little extra protection. Today, Brady Blackwell will come to appreciate a shatter-resistant shampoo bottle. Today, for the first time in years, Sheena Connor's grandpa will be able to walk with less pain. Today will be a better day for a lot of people, simply because of a material we call plastic. 
a popular teacher and shocking accusations. He touched me a lot. Are your kids safe from a teacher's touch? 48 hours Thursday. Heroin use is again reported on the rise in American streets and schools. And in a search for new ways to treat heroin addiction, researchers are now claiming remarkable success with a radical technique. It appears to offer the ultimate gain without pain, going cold turkey but not feeling the agony of withdrawal. Correspondent Bob Simon has been looking into this claim. Brian Zavell, a professional pool player, carries his cue around the streets of Beverly Hills today. A little more than a year ago, all he could carry was the monkey on his back, a $500 a day heroin habit he'd had for 18 years. I've tried every method there is. Uh, I've been in numerous rehabilitation programs, uh, some that worked very well, uh, but I really never put any clean time together. Then 13 months ago, he heard about a new program in Israel. He hopped on a plane and checked into a hospital near Tel Aviv where doctors are experimenting with a controversial, perhaps revolutionary, sleep cure. They've treated 2,000 addicts over the last 18 months, claim a 100% success rate in detoxifying the patients overnight. But as everyone knows, it's not overnight that counts. Six months after the therapy, we know that 75% of them, they didn't come back to drugs, they didn't relapse. They still opiate free. Here's how it works. An addict comes into the clinic an hour or two after his last fix. He's examined, tranquilized, and then just as he's feeling the first pangs of withdrawal, anesthetized. Over the next seven hours, his system is flushed out. The main drug is naltrexone, which stifles the brain's craving for narcotics. It's not a new drug, but until now, it was given as a pill to people who were already heroin free. Here it's given in massive doses intravenously. The body is suffering right now. And this is one of the, the things that we have to watch the patient all the time to find out exactly how to deal with him during the procedure. He goes through agony, convulsions, but he'll never remember it. He is literally sleeping through his withdrawal. In the morning, he's groggy, weak, and $5,000 poorer. That's the cost of the treatment. I really don't know exactly what they do. I'll, you know what? All I can tell you is it just worked for me, and I'm just so so excited about it. Brian Zavell has been off drugs 14 months now and feels confident he won't go back. That confidence is shared by Israelis who've been treated and now attend weekly therapy sessions. Like Brian, they say they have no more cravings and that the treatment's secret is its painlessness. Some people refer to this treatment as the pill because it's so easy to take. That's precisely the problem, according to many involved in more traditional methods. At this center in Israel, where former addicts live for 18 months after stopping cold turkey, the administrators insist there's no gain without pain. The new method, they admit, is not dangerous, but it's not magic. The, the procedure is not wrong, but the idea is wrong. That you can fall asleep and somebody will do the work for you. But 40% of the addicts who start this traditional program drop out. The streets of Tel Aviv are littered with them. And Dr. Weissman insists his new approach could work in the streets of New York or Los Angeles. We can treat a street, we can treat a village, we can treat a community. An extravagant claim by men who stand to make an extravagant amount of money if they can prove it. But they may be on the way. They've now got clinics running in Mexico, Italy, and Spain. They're negotiating to open their first American clinic in New Jersey. Bob Simon, CBS News, Tel Aviv. Just ahead, a death among the dead. Memories of Jerry Garcia. With the uncertainty of today's interest rates, many would-be home buyers have adopted a wait and see attitude. Your Coldwell Banker agent, on the other hand, thinks it's time to wake up to the possibilities. Buying a home can be more affordable. In fact, interest rates are down again. So why wait? All it takes is opening your eyes to the opportunities and knowing who to call. Coldwell Banker, support you can count on. Come on, guys. Hi, friend. How are you? Coffee and a jelly pill. Complete brand flakes. I see stairs. Like, I can't make a change. What's with you? I look like this when I joined the force? Well, no. I eat junk all day. I come home, I say I'm going to work out. I never do. I gotta do something. Thousands of people have started turning their lives around with four little words. Kellogg's Complete Brand Flakes. Hey, friend. Can I make a switch here? 
I feel like I'm married to you. Kellogg's Complete Bran Flakes. It's a start. Let me guess. One side of you craves easy chair comfort, while the other side itches for performance, right? Well, meet Buick Regal, with its famous 3800 V6 engine and grand touring suspension. Add to that an all-new interior with body-sensitive seats. And finally, there's a car for the two of you. Buick Regal. If heartburn shows up when you lie down, it may not be just heartburn. It may be something different. Doctors call it acid reflux, and you need something different. You need regular Gaviscon. Only Gaviscon forms a protective barrier that helps keep stomach acid down where it belongs. Mylanta can't. Regular Maalox can't. Gaviscon is the only medicine you can buy without a prescription that can. So to help stop reflux pain from acting up when you lie down, get Gaviscon. It's different from here all the way to here. Jerry Garcia, the Grateful Dead guitarist who kept the counterculture of the 1960s rocking and rolling right into the 90s, died today in California. He was 53. Garcia was found dead at a drug rehabilitation center reportedly of natural causes. Correspondent John Blackstone has the Jerry Garcia story. For Jerry Garcia, there were tributes today all the way from the sidewalks of San Francisco. I'm more numb right now than anything else. To the halls of the United States Congress. I get called out of a meeting and just told the news and I felt like I'd been kicked in the stomach. By the 1990s, Jerry Garcia and the Grateful Dead should perhaps have been museum pieces. But instead, these survivors of the psychedelic 60s just kept packing them in. It was the best example of how music can penetrate every age, every strata of society and make us as one. Hey, what the f*** is that? <laughs> For Jerry Garcia, the goal was not to make records. It was to play music live, to improvise, make every performance different. He wanted to be a good musician. And, and uh, you know, on, on, on the good days, you know, he was a great musician. I don't care if my works survive, you know or anything like that. I'm not really that attached to my own work. Uh, and, and in fact, that is sort of embarrassing in a way. But millions are attached to Garcia's work. The Grateful Dead is the top live band in the United States, grossing $50 million last year. And their fans, the Deadheads, are legendary. Oh, it's like the Gypsies. You know, we get together. It's a tribal song. Though Garcia spent much of his life fighting drug abuse, that was not the only legacy of the 60s he kept alive. That's something from the 1960s, is, is hope, is love, is peace, is creativity. Those are wonderful ideals. We would all like to be able to live an uncluttered life, a simple life, a good life, you know, and, like, think about moving the whole human race ahead a step. From counterculture to mainstream, America is grateful to have had Jerry Garcia. John Blackstone, CBS News, San Francisco. And that's part of our world tonight. Dan Rather reporting for the CBS Evening News. Good night. Get to sleep that night till the morning came around.